that ain't in the scripture. But the Lord knows. What do he know? You see, when we use these things, but it ain't no scripture base to back it up. It sound good. Oh, if you make one step, he'll make two. What is that in the word? You should be making two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to as far as you can count toward the things of God. <laughs> yeah, but you want to walk the things of God. That's what we were talking about. He said this you. You gotta have a desire, amen, to love the house of God. You gotta have a desire to pray. You gotta have a desire, amen, to read your word. And that's the hardest thing for Christians to do is to read their word. That's why the priests and the and, 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 and uh, the leaders in the house of God have so far advantage over the body of Christ. Then we'll, we'll pick up attitude and blame the preacher for not teaching us. We'll pick up attitude. Oh, that church ain't like this. And that church ain't like that. No, 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 no. Anyway, going back to that scripture, God will send rain on dry water land. Amen. If you're hungry enough, he'll bless you. Jesus. See, we got to get another attitude. We got we to gotta change our attitude. We got to, we are there to want the thing. Just like you want that car, want that house, want that boyfriend, want that girlfriend. My God, I told you my story. Man, I was hungry. Still am. Hungry before I got married. For God. Then I met my wife. And I had feelings for her. And I said, God. Oh, no, I know that ain't from God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because my desire is to do the will of God. That's right, that's right. My desire is not to get, you know, married and, and then I want to be like Paul. Y'all want to read the letters of Paul? Man, in the book, man, I want to be like Paul, brother. Oh, I had my life cut out. I said, I want to be like Paul. Paul was better than Jesus. Then God had to correct me. Now, when y'all hear this on YouTube, let me correct myself. Paul is not better than Jesus, but that's how I was thinking. Because Paul didn't die for me. Jesus died for me. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But I love his writing. I love how he, you know, hungered for God. He had a desire to please God. And, and he thinks that God was coming back in his lifetime. But we don't believe that today because that's why we don't have a sense of urgency for the things of God. Because we don't believe he's coming back. Oh, Lord, let me go. Yeah. I'm just trying to get this kingdom message out of here. Satan. No, if we serve God's kingdom, he will lose out. Y'all yes, right. don't believe it? All right, go to uh, Matthew's, uh, yeah, Matthew's 4. You know the temptation when he was tempted? Uh -huh. Matthew 4, 8 verse. Look at what it said. Now you can write this down. Matthew's uh, the fourth chapter, right? Mm -hmm. And the eighth verse. Mm -hmm. You see, Satan know that if we start serving God, right. he's going to lose out. Because he tried on Jesus. <laughs> Look at what he said. Again, the devil took... Are you there? Matthew uh, 4, chapter 8, verse. Again, the devil take him up into an exceedingly high mountain and show him all the kingdom of what the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, the devil said to Jesus, one thing about Jesus, he listened to the devil. Now, he don't do what the devil say. Right. See, we have a tendency to listen to the devil and do what he say. But Jesus listened to the devil and he rebuked the devil because the devil didn't know his mission. The disciples didn't know Jesus' mission. They didn't even want him to die. Not so, Lord, I know. It rebuked Jesus. He tell him, say, I'm going to die. I'm going to lay my life down for the sins of the world. Not so. See, when you in love with people, you don't want to lose them, and, and, and God knows that. When you really got your heart and you love somebody, you don't want to lose that person. Amen. But you got to look at what God is doing in that person's life. Oh, God, to bring you glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, see, that's why, you know, my wife is saying something today in, 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 in Sunday school. You got to be able to see God in all people. Yeah. 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 I can grab that. I got that. No, yeah, I'm going to get it I'm saying, <laughs> man, I'll tell you. You got to be able to see God in everybody. Yeah, right. The little child, the saved, the unsaved. Uh -huh. Because the Bible says all good and perfect gifts yeah. come from above. Uh -huh. I, I, it doesn't make me no different to me now. And I'm going to use 
the sinner to bless you. Come on now. Because the goodness of God is upon you. So let me, let me just finish this. Number nine, number nine. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee, and if thou will fall down, oh, oh. and why you got to fall down and worship somebody? <laughs> you know why that's so important? When you fall down, like you, you kneel and you pray, you are surrendering and you are submitting yourself to that person. The devil want Jesus to submit to him. Submit to a dead spirit. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jesus. Let me tell you something. And I, I know it's in uh, the 28th chapter of Matthew where he talks about all power is given unto Jesus. Mm -hmm. He have all power. That means that the devil don't have no power. That's right. That's right. If Jesus got all power with him, yes, yes. he don't have no power. Yes. Why, so, why are we so afraid of the enemy? Mm -hmm. I mean, he ain't got no power. Now he got deception. Amen. He can deceive people. The spirit of deception. Amen. And the Bible said, and I think it's in Ephesians and Galatians, don't be a, a fool. In other words, by the trick of the enemy. Let no man deceive you. It's a spirit, man. It's a spirit of deception. And you got to pray, man, to get that stuff out of you, get it from around you. You got to say, God, keep all the evils to take command the angel to watch over you. Oh, God, I tell you, I feel so good. My God, you can command the angel to watch over your children. You can command the angel. We're doing things the angel should be doing. Y'all oh, don't get this. I've got to get this. All right, all right, let's go to John 8. Let's go to John 8. I know we got a lot of scripts, but I'll tell you, I got about, man, I got enough stuff here to last until. Till Jesus come, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of stuff here, man, I'm telling you. And we're going to get this. We're going to get all this, man. Because we're changing our perspective. I said, we are changing our perspective. We are changing. You got to know who you are in the body of Christ. Amen. So we're going to look at John. Did I tell you John, right? John 8, 30, and, uh, yeah, 33. Look at what it said. And... As he speak these words, many believe on him. This is Jesus. Okay? Now we're going to go into 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If ye continue in my what? Word. Then are ye my what? If you just continue in his word. I read the word of God every day. Every day, I make it a habit. I pray every day for you. I pray every day for the leaders. I pray every day for my our president. You hear what I'm saying? Our government. That God will somehow get into the government system. Amen. And make it a righteous government. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. So people, Christians who want to run for political office, man, I think that's a blessing. Because when God put them in that position, they're going to change some of that filthy stuff that the world system set up. Oh God. And it start with you and I. Alright, let's go. Let me go. Well, 30, 33, 32. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. You want to be free from hate? Know the truth. If you want to be free from uh, whatever have you bound, know the truth. <laughs> I like what people uh, politics say. What in front of Jesus said, what is the truth? The man stand right in front of you and you don't even know it. Don't even know what is truth. What is truth? So Jesus said, the truth shall make you free. Then answer him. They answer him. I'm sorry. They answer him. We be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. How saith then a thou? Ye shall be made free. The man, those people 